Okay, so it's time to try the Butterick 6018, so uh, let's get to it. Okay, so Butterick 6018 is this pattern. It's a reproduction of a 1950s pattern. I'm going to be doing essentially this view. So the one with the collar and the cuffs. Um, but being a Butterick pattern, being one of the big four or the big five or however many there are these days, there's always issues with sizing. Um, whether it's the amount of ease that's been drafted into the pattern, to which means that the that garments come out bigger than you expect them to because they've been overly generous with ease. Mind you, it's better that way than the other. I'd rather have to take in a garment than have cut out a garment and need to add more on. Um, so if you're somebody who just plows ahead and cuts everything out and sews it up, which often happens at the beginning of a sewing journey, I've, I've been there, um, being able to take the pattern in and tailor it to fit you that way is not a bad way to go about it. However, when you're my size, which is the larger end of the average band, um, you can run into a different sort of problem. Quite often these patterns are not drafted big enough for me. Sometimes I can just fit in. Sometimes I'm just over the top. Sometimes I'm comfortably in. It kind of depends on what the pattern is. Um, so I quite often have to grade up at least part of the pattern more than is on the paper and I've had to do that with this um so yeah so I traced out the, the pattern pieces and then I graded it up and I'm just going to insert some footage now to show you how I went about doing that so that if you're in a similar position to myself where you are topping out of these patterns it's not as complicated as you'd think to get them to fit it's a lot less numbers heavy than say adjusting anything pattern doesn't mean you should have to do it Patterns should absolutely go up large enough for us to be working within what's on the tissue paper. But that being said, they will never exactly fit. They're always going to need to be adjusted to fit you perfectly. So this is how I go about making my pre-fit adjustments, the ones that I have to do before I can start to tailor the pattern, before I can start sewing anything up. So before I even cut out my twirl fabric. Okay, so to adjust your patterns, um, you need obviously your pattern piece, you need some paper to fill the gaps, you need some tape, you need some sort of straight edge, so your, your front curve will sometimes have a straight edge on it. I'm using a ruler because I'm working in miniature um, and a pair of scissors. Now the reason I'm doing this in miniature is because the skirt panel won't fit in the shot, so this is what we're, we're dealing with. Now once you've worked out how much you need to add, you need to decide where you're going to add it in. Now I could add my additional width to the side seams, which is absolutely fine. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be faffing about with shaping and notches and, and that sort of thing. I want to keep those things as they are. I also don't want to disrupt the hemline. I don't want to add extra width into the hem. So I don't want to be adding the same the whole way down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be marking down the middle and I'm going to be finding some pivot points to adjust my pattern at. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my seam allowance and I'm going to think about the distance that I want to add into my pattern. So on my scrap piece of paper, which is at least as long as my pattern piece or at least as long as uh, where I'm going to cut, I've marked out the distance I'm going to increase by and I've marked my seam allowances onto the pattern. Now, I've marked all the way around on the miniature. Sometimes on larger pattern pieces, I'll just add them at where I'm going to make the adjustment. The next thing I'm going to think about on this skirt is where my hip line is. So the waistline is around about here on these patterns. Um, so my hip line is probably going to be around about here-ish. Um, but obviously I'll measure that when I'm working with the big patterns. Uh, because I want to make sure that I'm adding the increase through the, the waist and the hips. So I want to be uh, adjusting below the hip point or at the hip point of the highest but I'm actually going to do it below in this case. I'm going to mark at the, at the same point on each of the pattern pieces so I'm just going to mark there because that's where I'm going to make that pivot point. So next I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to mark a line the whole way down 
the center of the panel. And I'm also going to mark a line at this point that I've decided to pivot at. So if I was going to hip pivot exactly at the hip, I would do it there. Um, but I'm just going to go slightly below for this particular adjustment. Up to you where you put them. It depends on what, what effect you want to achieve. Now, we're going to create a pivot point here. And we're going to create a pivot point here. So those places are not going to get detached from the pattern. They're going to stay linked. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down this centre line to just before that hemline seam allowance. So we're going to be very careful and not clip through that line. Um, but as I say, we do want to have the pattern attached at that point. We're going to be pivoting around it so we don't want it separated. And then we're going to cut up through the hem seam allowance again to just before that seam so that we're still attached. And we could, if I wanted to, um, just uh, spread apart and fill in that gap. And that would give me the extra distance. It would cause issues here. It would cause issues here in terms of I'd need to, to straighten out and smooth out those lines, which is fine. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't be getting the same increase at the waistline as I am at the hip line. And that's what I need to achieve with this particular pattern um, because they both need the same amount added to get the fit that I'm looking for. So I'm also going to cut along this line to just before the seam allowance. And again, I'm going to cut into the seam allowance at the same point to create a pivot point there. So this piece is now attached and can move. So the next step is to take our bit of scrap paper that we've marked the distance we want to increase by on and we're going to line up the straight line to it and tape that down. So uh, apologies for tape noise. So we're going to tape that in place so that it doesn't move. Then we're going to line up this top portion here where we need the adjustment to be with the other side of the line. And again, we're going to tape that down. So we've increased the distance here but we've not increased the distance as much down at the bottom. So it's, it's gradiate, graded out. And we can then just even off the top line and the bottom line here. I mean, we could make this more pronounced if we wanted. We could pivot it so that this bit here was closer to this edge, which make this adjustment more pronounced and change the silhouette a bit more. What we've done is we've added the width here uh, but kept the same amount of, of distance at the hem. So it won't be quite as full a skirt because the angle is not as steep, but it won't make a huge amount of difference to the overall effect of the skirt once it's sewn up. We've not taken out so much of the fullness that it's going to lose that impact. Um, it's going to preserve a little bit of fabric this way. If I'd have increased the hem width by six inches <laughs> the whole way around, so in, in a total of six inches, that's a fairly significant amount more fabric that we're going to be using. So by keeping the increase here, we get the fit that we want. We keep the hemline the same. We're not using too much more fabric than we would have otherwise been using. And we're not making a massive impact to the shape of the skirt. So I don't need to actually smooth too much out here. If I'd have kept this line closer to here, there'd be a bit more of a change in the, the line here and the shaping here. So you can make all sorts of adjustments in that way. Uh, so I'm going to do this to all of the panels and uh, then I'm going to do a similar thing to the bodice pieces so that the waistline or the or the seam line here is the same length on the bodice as it is on the skirt. Uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so I've adjusted all the skirt panels. There's four pieces, four pattern pieces for the eight panel skirt. They've all had three quarters of an inch added down the middle 
So that should give me the waist measurement that I need to be able to actually get into the dress and then I can tweak the fit from there. Um, but obviously I need the bodice seam to match the skirt seam. So I need to add three quarters of an inch to each quarter of the bodice. So this one is the front bodice that you could have two. So it's one either side of this dart is probably what I'm going to do. Well, it's definitely what I'm going to do. And this one is the back bodice. So this is cut on the fold. So again, we're going to be adding three quarters of an inch on either side of the dart. Uh, you might be thinking, why don't you just eliminate the darts? Because that'll give you some more room there and then you won't have to add so much in. And yeah, that is a thought. But first up, if we look at the line drawings, um, there are style lines where the darts actually meet the seams of the skirt panels. So I want to preserve that because I quite like the look of that. It's a nice way to tie the bodice and the skirt together, particularly if you were doing the bodice in a different colour to the skirt, which is not my intention at the moment. But if the pattern works, you never know what I might do in the future. So I definitely want to preserve that as a look. But also darts have a purpose. So whilst they take out uh, width on the seam that they're coming out of, or length if it's a side seam, like the, the bust dart here is taking length out of the side seam, they also turn your flat bit of fabric into a 3D shape, so they mould it around the body. So I don't want to lose the moulding that's going to come under the bust here and into the... Uh, bottom of the back here. I also don't want to be impacting the measurement here too much because we, as we know from looking at the finished garment measurements and my measurements, um, I'm not that far off. The, the, the ease that's called for in the pattern was three and a half inches and based on my measurement versus the finished garment measurement, uh, we're looking at three inches around the bust at the fullest point so I don't want to tinker with that too much um, but I do obviously need more width at the bottom so I'm going to be essentially adding in a triangle alongside the dart and I'm going to try and keep below the top of the dart if I can just thinking where to place it on this side in the, on this side, I'll probably go up the side of the dart and pivot at the si at the centre front seam and just smush it out that way. I mean, yeah, it's going to change the shape of this front a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that works when it's on the body. It might not be a problem because obviously my belly sticks out, so it's going to need the coverage there. So that might work quite nicely. This one is going to be a little bit more tricksy. Because um, obviously if I use that as... If I cut up there as well, again, it might be a bit hard to keep the fabric together. And I could pivot at the side seam here. And so that might work. Or I could actually use this dart and have that as my pivot point. But then I've got to add in, as it folds up, I need to add some of the length back into the bottom of the seam. So you think about that one a little bit. The back's a little bit more straightforward. And um, so for this one, I will uh, probably pivot just inside the fold line and then pivot at the side seam. But I can just sort of, there's more room here. I can just cut up here to do that side and this side I'll do from the dart. Um, but yeah, it's this one that I need to ponder on a little bit. I could just cut up here and pivot at the side seam. That may be the easiest, because if I'm adding in fabric here, then I'm taking away some of the impact of the dart there. So yeah, so I'm going to be pivoting at the side seam here and just shifting that quadrant out. So I'll get that done and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, so that's the back bodice adjusted. So I've used the leg of this dart and I've pivoted here to shift this quadrant out. Obviously that has overlapped it up into here, so I've needed to add 
the length back at the bottom and smooth out this line that's going to be sat on the fold. If it was an uh, like cut line, I maybe wouldn't have worried about that too much. Um, but because it's on the fold, it needs to be straight. And then on this side, I've added in the wedge there. And again, it's it's pivoted in the corner here. So I've had to add this much length back to the bottom. And then I've smoothed out that seam as well. Um, so yeah, I, I may need to do some adjustments here when I fit it. Um, but it's not a huge amount that's been added in. So I'm not too concerned. And I do have the dart here to help me with that. So it might not be too much of an issue. So I can always lengthen the dart if I need to take out some here. But until it's actually on the body, can't really tell. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do the same process on the front bodice piece. So I've already marked in where I'm going to be cutting. So I'm going to pivot here. So I'm going to use the dart leg here and to cut up to just before the point. And I'm going to cut in from the seam there, pivot that bit round to add in three quarters of an inch here. Um, and then obviously I have to smooth out bits and pieces there as well. Um, I'll just curve this line in because this is the centre front and it's in two pieces. So I will we'll smooth out the curve there. And then on this side, I had the option of using the bust start here and pivoting there. Um, Actually, I think I probably will do that. So I'll cut up the line of the dart and I'll, I'll move this line to be underneath that and use the, the pivot point there because I'm going to have to be smoothing out the bottom anyway. So yeah, so they do look a little bit like patchwork when they're done. But once I've done all my adjustments from my fitting, if it's too chaotic, then I'll be retracing the pattern anyway before I cut it out in the final fabric so that I have a well-fitting pattern to store ready for if I want to make it again. Um, so yeah, so let's get the front bodice done. Okay, so I've added in the width. So I've added in here and I've added in here. I'm obviously just going to have to remember that this is the dart and that isn't when I sew it up. And I've added the length that disappeared back into the bottom. I've smoothed out uh, this side with my French curve, so that that blends in nicely. I'm not too worried about this notch because I can use the dart to line up my seams for my skirt, um, and then I can put these points back in later. Um, what we have got over here, though, is a little bit of funkiness. This is obviously still going to be the edge of the bodice, so this this bit will get cut off in a minute. Um, but because when we shifted this portion out to add the width here. It's gone up into where the dart is. It's effectively, if I hadn't put the length back on, taken the dart out. So what I want to make sure is that when I sew the dart in, I'm going to have a nice smooth line down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold uh, the pattern up as if the dart was sewn in place. This is going to be a little bit awkward with the layers and the cell tape, so um, we'll see how it works. Um, but I'm going to fold it up as if I'd sewn the dart so that I can then mark where the edge needs to be for the end of this dart. Okay, so when we fold the dart up, you can actually see that to keep that seam straight, we do need to add a little bit in here. Now, that's about half an inch-ish, just under half an inch. Um, let's measure that. Yeah, it's half an inch. So we're adding in half an inch to the width at the fullest part of the bust. Um, only on the front at either side. So we are going to be adding in a bit of ease there. Um, not too worried about going from three inches to four inches according to the numbers in the pattern at this point um partly because i don't actually know if the dart is in the right place yet because i haven't made the twirl up so i can probably find a way to lose some of that ease if i need to once it's in fabric form 
So I'm just going to trim that up and uh, then we're ready to cut out the fabric. Right, so pre-fit adjustments are made and I've cut out my toile fabric. This is the front bodice, both pieces. I've got my sort of kind of maybe tailor's tacks in where the dots were. I've marked in the legs of uh, the darts. Hopefully that's showing up. Uh, it's in a purple short. Um, and I've marked which side's the wrong side as well in chalk. I've marked it towards the top of the bodice and I'll do the same when I come to mark up the uh, back bodice. I've put the tailor's tacks, sort of maybe possibly tailor's tacks, in on the back bodice already but it's still attached to its paper so I've not marked in the, the legs of the darts yet for the back. Um, but with the 6018 you start with a bodice which is a very sensible place to start for a dress. You want to be fitting things from the top down. Um, so we're going to get the bodice sewn up. Um, I'm using this green poly cotton and I'm going to be using a contrasting thread partly so that I can see where the stitches are if I need to rip out and redo and adjust there may be all sorts of adjustments going on with this pattern because I've had to grade it out myself there's more likely to be issues that aren't exactly right um human error and all that plus to get the fit that I'm going for which is not dissimilar to that, but working to my body, so less definition in the waist, as we know. Um, there is likely to be quite a few changes, whether it's taking in a seam, letting out a seam, adding in fabric, slashing and spreading. I'm a little concerned about the sleeves. I, I think I may need to slash and spread those, but we'll wait and see. Um, dealing with my sway back as well. Um, shouldn't be too much of an issue in this because the bodice is done separate to the skirt, so. I can probably make that adjustment in where I put the seam line for the bodice and the skirt pieces, but we'll see once it's sewn up. So we're going to start with the bodice. Uh, yeah, contrasting thread so I can see the stitches, partly as I say, so in case I need to make adjustments, and partly because, let's face it, for me, a dress in this green, it's going to look like a Tinkerbell cosplay. Which is fine. If you want to do a Tinkerbell cosplay, do a Tinkerbell cosplay. It's just not what I'm looking for for this pattern. So, uh, so yes, I'm using up some poly cotton um, that I don't really use for anything else anymore. Okay, so body starts are all in and they've been pressed with my new tailor's hair. Highly recommend getting one of these if you don't have one already. And um, this is new to me. Um, I only got it a couple of days ago. It's by Prim and there are others available and you can make them. There are tutorials all over the place of how to do it. So one's got a smooth side for higher temperatures, smoother fabrics, and uh, it looks like wool. I suspect it's not, um, but it's a slightly rougher side for uh, rougher fabrics. Um, and I believe it said to use lower temperatures on that side. So that lets me think it might be polyester or, or acrylic or some sort of man-made meltable fibre there. Um, but yeah, super, super useful. And then we get the joy of butterick instructions. Now, the thing with the big four sewing patterns is they're not going to hold your hand quite as much as the independent designers. I'm OK with that. I like to sew using the big four um, patterns because, well, the indie designers didn't really exist and certainly weren't readily available when I was learning to sew as a child and teenager. But, uh, so I'm I'm okay with the slightly more scant um, instructions, largely because my mum taught me to sew and we had a sewing teacher at school. So not that we did much sewing um, at school, mostly my mum. But, uh, she's been sewing for a long time, so the expertise is that. Um, but there are sometimes instructions that make you just go, eh? And uh, this is one, this is the ninth instruction in the pattern that comes after you've done the darts. Pin bodice back to bodice front at shoulders, clipping bodice front where necessary, baste and stitch. I'm skipping the baste stage. Um, probably shouldn't, but I am. Um, I've never had to clip a seam allowance before I've sewn the seam before. So I was like, why on earth would you do that? That can't be right. But... In actual fact, 
and hopefully you'll be able to see this when I hold it up. So this is one of my shoulder seams. This is the front and that's the back. You see there's a curve in this front piece. If you see, look at the, the stay stitching, you'll be able to get an idea where it is. And the front piece is at that point smaller than the back piece. So to make it match up, you need to clip into the corner. That'll be interesting to sew, given that I can uh, get puckers on straight flat seams. Pretty sure I'm going to manage to get puckers on one that I've got to clip in before I've sewn it. But we'll see. We'll give it a go. That's what twirls are for. Well, that went rather better than expected. So my shoulder seams are done and they've got this little bit of a shape to them. If I just uh, hold it that way. So we've got this curve coming up. Um, might need a little bit more of a press, but uh, yeah. This curve coming up at the neckline. This flappy bit at the front is the lapels. Um, when I do the final version, there'll be a facing on there. So it looked like a folded out collar when it's sewn up, but uh, not doing facings for twirl. So it's just to check the fit. And uh, let's check this other seam as well. So yeah, I managed to not get puckering, so I'm quite pleased with that. And again, you can see the bit of a curve coming up at the neck end of that seam. So yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, when you're pressing shoulder seams, big four patterns won't always tell you when to press seams or what direction to press them in. In general, shoulder seams, side seams are likely to be pressed backwards. You can press them open, depend open depending on what seam finish you're using, but in general, if they're closed, you're going to press them backwards. At bust starts, you're going to press down, and back darts usually towards the middle. Front darts, I believe, would normally go to the middle. They did in this pattern. Um, so yeah, so in general, that's what you're looking at. It uh, does partly depend on your seam finish. Okay, so let's get these side seams done, and then we can check the bodice fit and see how we're doing. Okay, so the bodice is on. So I have already had to make one change, but I'll explain that in a minute. Let's start by talking what I'm wearing underneath the bodice. Now, the thing with clothes is they are designed to fit the fashionable silhouette of the day. Um, which is built with your undergarments. So if I wanted a perfectly accurate version of a 1950s dress, then I would need to be wearing 1950s style underwear. That means bullet bra and I don't have one of those. So it's not going to be 100% accurate, but that's okay. What I am wearing underneath it though is a slip. Now, slips are not there to protect you from the, the clothing. That's not the purpose of underwear. Undergarments are there to produce the silhouette that you're looking for. Slips in particular will smooth some lines out, um, but they're essentially there for silhouette and to protect your clothes from you. The layer of clothing that you wear closest to your skin picks up all of your grime, which means that it needs washing most often. The more you wash a garment, the less it lasts. So if you want your clothes to last, whatever price point you're getting them at, whether you're making them themselves or buying them in Primark, um, or even high end, whatever price point your clothes are, you don't need to wash them after everywhere, particularly if you're wearing appropriate undergarments. I don't always wear something between my clothes and my skin, other than, you know, bra um, and pants, that kind of thing. But, uh, there's a reason people used to wear slips, and like I say, it's not to protect you from your clothes. Um, it does help smooth lines out, it helps with the silhouette, and it means you don't have to wash your clothes quite so often. So, um, 
when everything's hand washed that's a good thing but washing machines are quite hard on your clothes so take some lessons from the past and maybe consider what you're wearing underneath your clothes so when it comes to fitting because silhouette comes from your undergarments you want to be wearing appropriate undergarments whilst you're fitting as I say, I don't have a bullet bra, so I'm not going to worry about getting 100% accurate um, 50s silhouette. But I will be wearing this dress with a slip a lot of the time, if not all the time, because I'm going to be making it out of cotton poplin and British weather. So yeah, slip. Um, this one is polyester, which is not ideal. I'd rather it was cotton or silk or something like that. Um, but it'll do the job until I get around to making it a better one. Um, so let's th talk fit. Now the change I've already had to make is here. Now there's a notch in the pattern which I presume is where you're sewing the facing to. Obviously I skipped the facing steps um, because twirl and that notch is there so I'm going to need to look carefully at the facing pieces and actually see if I need to adjust anything because I've had to open it up to get it over my head and uh, so that's as high as I want that that seemed to go it's a nice height for me so as I say I'll be comparing that to the facing piece and seeing if I need to make any adjustments with the paper pieces I mean it may well be that once the facing's on it ends up there anyway so we'll see All right so then we're looking at the top of the garment again I'm gonna sit down so you can actually see the top so as I say, this is going to have facings on it, so I'm not going to worry too much about this collar type thing. But I'm going to look at the shoulder seams. With the collar thing turned out as is sensible, that's where that shaping bit from the shoulder seam comes in. It's causing that collar to sit where you want it to sit. So then let's look at the shoulder seam itself. It's pretty straight. I'm happy with that. I don't think it needs to be any straighter than that for my purposes, but I do think it needs to stop at the point of, of the shoulder. Let me just judge that against the pictures on the pattern. Yeah, the shoulders are sitting on the apex. And if we look at the line drawings as well, the sleeves are sitting in at the apex of the, the shoulder. So I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm going to mark that point on there. That's where I want my seam line to be for my sleeves. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, keeping as straight as I can. Now that means that there's going to be three eighths of an inch maybe taken off. There's about five eighths of an inch seam allowance that's going to take it to about there. So there may be some trimming happening to the arm side, which can affect the, slope, the shape of the sleeve head. So that's worth considering. Next thing I'm going to look at is the bust darts. Now I'm okay with where they're sitting. I mean, these ones underneath can afford to be a little shorter. And possibly a little wider, but uh, we don't want it too tight. The side darts I'm fine with. Uh, if anything, they could afford to be a little bit longer, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. You're never going to get perfect, perfect fit. You just want close enough. These underbust darts, yeah, they're a little bit long, so we're going to drop them down to there. Same on that side. Drop that down to there. And you're happy with the side bus start, which is finishing there. This side is open because there's going to be a zip going in there. I'm not going to do too much to change the circumference at the moment. I'm going to wait until I've got the skirt on to deal with that. Okay, so we've got darts in the back as well to look at. So. Uh, take some footage of that because I can't see behind myself. Once I've looked at the footage I'll come back and tell you what I think. A 
Okay, I'm not unhappy with the back. Um, I do think it's slightly long, uh, but then it does still have its seam allowance on there because it's not attached to the skirt. Uh, when we look at the line drawing, you see the back of the, the bodice sits a bit above the natural waist, but as we've discussed, I have a short waist. So if I could draw, grab my version on my imagining of this dress. All of the, uh, it's my post-it note telling me what things to look at. Um, we look at my version of it, the back seam is sitting much lower towards my natural waist. Uh, so I'm going to retain that. Um, I'll double check it once the skirt's on and um, see if it's sitting where I want it to be. Uh, I think I might take a generous seam allowance and bring it up slightly. So, um, but I'm going to mark on the back where I think it should be. So... I think we're looking at about there. So I think my we'll seam needs to be about there. And we'll see once it's on. Again, at the front, I want to make sure that the stitch line, the seam line, is under the bust. So the highest I want it to be is there. And that's about 5 eighths of an inch up from the raw edge. So that's about right, 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, seam allowance and we have got the slope coming down the side on both sides to angle it down towards the back um so yeah so i'll so i'm not too concerned about those the shot the arm size the one thing that's concerning me slightly so next step is going to be to get the sleeves on so i can check the fit of the sleeves as i say i'm going to stitch them where I've marked the stitch line, so it is a bit further in than the pattern calls for, um, which may be because of how I've graded it out. It maybe didn't need to be graded out as far as I've graded it out. Um, although I didn't really make any changes to the top portion. So it may just be the amount of ease that's built into the pattern. That's a little bit too much for me on the shoulders. So uh, yeah. So let's try the sleeves. So I'm just going to make the one sleeve up for first to check the fit. Um, I don't really need both sleeves because they should fit the same. Um, I've got both cut out, which means that if I need to make any changes, I can trial them on the second sleeve um, before transferring anything to the paper patterns. And then we'll deal with the skirt afterwards and see if I do need to make that adjustment on the back to get the back to sit. Uh, where it needs to be um there will also be adjustments to be made on the skirt as well because of the the length of the, the waist portion of the skirt that's going to be too long for me um so i'm fully expecting to make <laughs> to make uh, alterations there so sleeves first okay so sleeve is on uh, as you can see it's lifting up a bit as i raise my arm so there may be a range of motion issue there um but it's hard to tell because that's the side that's open uh, for the zip and uh skirt's not on yet um so it's not too bad it's a little snug but not hugely snug the arm size is quite comfortable and you're bringing that seam line in has worked and it was this nice little puff feature there which i quite like i mean it's a teeny puff it's not much of a puff uh, but yeah you can see there fabric's falling taut as i'm bending my arm so that's something i want to watch it's a bit of pulling there as well um, i'm gonna leave it for now um i'm thinking if i sew the underarm sleeve the, the undersleeve seam at four eighths instead of five or three eighths instead of five that will give me a bit of extra leeway there and if i do the same across here maybe um i don't think we need to make too many drastic changes to the sleeve 
it might be just the seam allowance that needs a slight bit of adjustment. Um, but I'm going to have a little think about it. And I'm going to come back to it when, when the sleeve is on and I can see whether that is still lifting up as much as it is now with the skirt holding the bodice down. Um, but I do think I'm probably going to need to enlarge the sleeve slightly around the arm portion. Um, and I may just need to reposition where that is. When I sewed the sleeve in, when I set it in, I brought the top of the seam line in a bit um, so that it sits nearer the, the point of the shoulder. But I didn't do anything on the rest of the arm side. I tapered it out a bit. So it may well be that I need to bring this side of the arm side in a little bit. But, uh, I'm going to think on it and come back to it in a bit. And as I say, I'm going to do the skirt next and check the fit of the skirt and then see if that has any impact on what's going on here. Um, I have a feeling that I'm going to need to bring the arm sight in a bit because that's sitting quite far onto my arm. So yeah, if I brought, bring the arm sight down here in line with where I brought that to, that might do the trick. Um, but I'm still going to need to enlarge that as well. So I'll make a decision on how best to do that whilst I'm working on the skirt. Okay, so we're back in the craft room for day two of twirling the Butterick 6018. Um, so yesterday I was working on the bodice, you can see it on the mannequin back there over one of my slips. And uh, overall, not too bad a fit. Um, there's plenty of wearing ease, which is good. I have moved the top of the shoulder seam but I do need to make some further adjustments to the sleeve. I'm just waiting till I've got the skirt on so I can see how everything behaves with the skirt weighting it down. For the same reason, although I'm thinking about shortening the underbust darts, I haven't done that yet uh, because I want to see how they behave with the skirt weighting everything down. It's possible that uh, they'll sit a bit lower with that weight on. Not that it's a great deal of weight, it's cotton, but um, you never know. It's also possible that I may want to take out a little bit of circumference um, from the seams. Um, and I don't want to be doing that on the side seams because one of them's having a zip in. That's just going to be awkward. Um, not impossible, but if I can avoid it, I'll avoid it. So I may, might want to take it out of the seams in the skirt that meet those darts, which would mean that I'd also be taking it out of the darts. So... I don't want to make the change until I know what the full change is. Um, so, so that's the first step, is getting the skirt put together. It's a panel skirt, so it shouldn't take too long to sew up. And then I need to work out what I need to adjust, how much shortening I need to do in that waist portion of the skirt. Um, because if I show you the line drawing again, it's got this straight section that's meant to sit over the waist. Um, let me see a bit clearer in that one possibly but when it goes on to my body because I'm short waisted that's going to be truncated a bit so I need to work out how much of that's going to come off um, so I'm going to try the skirt on pin together the zip opening and work out where I want the seam line to be and mark that on just like I did on the bodice and then sew the two together put the zip in and then I can finalise what changes I need to make um, I definitely need to add some circumference to the bicep of the sleeve. Not totally sure how much, it's, it's wearing ease I need to add. So it may not need to be very much at all. Um, I've got my second sleeve already cut out, but this is obviously not going to be the one that's going to get used. Um, but as you can see, the sides are not straight straight, but they're not far off. There's a cuff portion that goes on here. So I could just, if it's a little bit, I could just add the width. Um, and if it's not very much that I need to add, um, so somewhere in the region of like half an inch, I can do that with the existing seam allowance. And just uh, so a narrower seam allowance to check the fit before I adjust the pattern piece. Um, but I'm gonna do that later on because I'm also not totally convinced by the shape of the arm side. So that's something I wanna check once the skirt is on, because again, the skirt's gonna pull things downwards um, and may change where everything sits. So that's the plan. 
and uh, let's get to it. Okay, before I start sewing up the seams on this skirt, it's an eight panel skirt. So you've got front pieces, back pieces, side front pieces, back front pieces, and you need to keep track of where the zip's going. So, as before, I'm marking the wrong side of the fabric. To, I've actually marked my front pieces CF, as in centre front, and I'll be marking my side pieces SF for side front, or I might use right front, left front, so RF, LF. That's probably more useful, actually, for keeping track of the zip. And then I'll do the same on the back pieces. That way I know I'm sewing my front pieces to my front pieces and my back pieces to my back pieces. And I know which side the zip's going in. So it's not compulsory. To, if you're marking the, the wrong side of your fabric anyway, you may as well. Okay, so um, maybe didn't need quite as much um, grading in the skirt because... Uh, you can't quite fit two of me in there, but um, yeah, that's much bigger than it needs to be. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. Let's uh, go about taking in some seams. <coughs> okay, so I've uh, pinned in the side front seams and the side seams of the skirt um, to get the amount of take-in that I need. I'll just pop the bodice on over top. So I want to make sure that my seams will still line up with the darts under the bust, which they seem to be. Um, can finesse that in a minute. Actually, front panel of the skirt is the right distance. So that means I need to take out the excess from the skirt on the side panels, on the, well, the, the side seams, so the centre front seams. Centre front panels are fine. Um, I'll obviously check the back in the same way. Um, I haven't done anything to the back seams, but I'll check that they are matching up with the bodice. But, uh, right, let's shift these pins from the front because there's no point in them being there if I don't want that seam to change. So let me try adjusting the side seams instead. And just confirm that that panel is matching my seams. So that's the centre seam. And that's the, the side of the panel. So yeah, so that's right. And let's do the same on the other side. Yeah, that dart is matching that seam line fairly nicely. Also, I need to be quite precise when I sew to get it to the right place. And I quite like where that's sitting at the front. So there's obviously quite a bit of this is going to need to come off. So I want my seam line to be here. Let's mark my seam line on the skirt as well. And I will finesse that once I've taken in the side seams properly. Okay, so this may look a little peculiar. So I've done a little bit of uh, finagling on the mannequin because obviously I can't see behind myself. So I've pinned the skirt onto the bodice, making sure that the seams line up and taking into consideration the areas where I wanted to take in 
from the skirt. Now, there's looseness in the bodice here, mostly at the sides. Um, so I'll absorb that into the darts here. So I'll just make them a little bit fatter on the outside. And if I turn Madame round, so we've got the zip side here. Um, at the back, we had a bit of excess fabric on the skirt in the middle when I lined up these two seams. So I've taken that in and reclaimed that from where I'd taken in at the sides. So I'm going to adjust the skirt in those areas and then try it on again and see how it is before I attach it to the bodice. So I'll need to take in those front darts as well, but um, one thing at a time. Okay, so here's the adjustment to the centre back. So I've started where I had it pinned and I've uh, curved it out into the original seam. I've not unpicked the original seam because it's a twirl, I'm only fitting it. Obviously I'll be transferring this onto the paper pieces, so when I cut out the pattern pieces, it's not going to have the excess fabric there, but for purposes of fitting it's fine. So I'm going to do the same to the right side seam and then I will pin the excess fabric on the left side seam out of the way um, whilst I sort the fit out and get the zip fit in and stuff. Okay, so that's already much better. I mean, it's not tight, which is good. You want a bit of wearing these in there. But obviously, still got excess fabric here. Um, but yeah, much better that way around. So I'm going to pin it back to the bodice and uh, double check those seam lines are still in the right place and work out how much of the underbust darts need to change in. They need to be widened because there's a bit of excess fabric there. So I'll get that done and then we'll get the two attached together. Okay, so this time I've pinned the skirt on underneath the bodice so that I can see what's going on with the bodice. So at the back we can see the back darts and the seams are lining up fairly well. There's a little bit of slack. Um, but I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. I'll see what that's like once it's all sewn together and put on because I may need to take some out of this seam for that sway back so we can deal with that at that point. I turn it back to the front again, past the zip opening. Right, pin that shut in a second and just double check. But, uh, but this one's looking a little bit funky and I think it's because I haven't pinned the zip shut. But on this side, you see I've widened that dart a little bit. It's mostly coming from the right hand side and it'll be the same on this side as well. So yeah, so we're getting there. Yeah, with the uh, zip closed, that's significantly smoother. I mean, it's obviously not perfect, but it's pins, so it's never going to be perfect. So, okay, so I'm going to adjust these darts, and um, then we'll be sewing the bodice and the skirt together. Okay, so I've taken out the original darts. Eh, just excuse the neighbour's car. Um, and I've left, I've pressed them out a bit, but there's still a bit of a crease left from the original dart, so I've shortened them and made them wider. So we are now getting a bit better of a, a shape, but we are getting a little bit of a <laughs> weird bobbling at the uh, front where the old crease is still in place, but uh, on the whole, that's a bit better. I will need to smooth out this line in the pattern piece um, once I transfer it to paper piece. As you can see, the front is sitting much more smoothly across this part. There's a lot less looseness there. There is still looseness in the back, which I think I'm probably going to need for movement. So uh, let's see what it's like once I've got it attached to the skirt. Okay, so uh, almost there. The skirt's fitting nicely. The zip is sewn in. Not overly keen on the uh, vintage method of sewing it in, but there we go. Um, but yeah, the skirt's fitting nicely, the bodice is fitting nicely at the front. So I've got some footage of the back. Uh, it's a bit looser on the back, but I think that's okay. I think that's what I need. Um, the sleeve is uh, still bothering me. And I don't think it's the bicep. 
Okay, I think, if you look, when I lift my arm this way, there's pulling here and there's quite a bit of excess fabric under the arm here. And that's as far as I can lift my arm at the moment. If I tuck the fabric up into my armpit, I can actually move my arm quite a bit more. So I think it's actually the arm side that's the issue. So I think the seam line needs to come more down here. Um, so from the shoulder point, more in this kind of direction and higher under there. So, I'm going to try that with the other sleeve. So we've got the shoulder point here, and if we bring it down here, and obviously there's no fabric there, so I'll need to put a little bit of extra fabric in there if I'm going to actually sew it on that way, but that's okay. And if that doesn't work, we may be onto the gusset. Um, but at the moment, when I try and lift my arm higher, it lifts the whole dress up, and that's just not ideal really. I mean it goes back to the right place which is fine but uh, I'd rather it was staying put and as I say if I hold the fabric into the armpit the dress isn't moving anywhere near as much and this is essentially what I think was going on with the yellow shirt once I'd done all the adjustments. I think the arm the arm side wasn't quite where it needed to be but um, it's where the yellow shirt is wearable so that's the main thing. Uh, so yeah so so I'll try this on the other sleeve, see if we can get a bit more movement. So first things first, let's patch in some fabric under there and reshape the arm side. Okay, so we have partial sleeve success. It's not perfect, partly because I've got a couple of uh, puckers creeping in, one there and one on the back, but it's, it's good enough. Um, so I've got more range of motion before that seam line pops up over my boob. Um, so I can get to sort of there without coming up, whereas on this side I can only get to there. So yes, yeah, so there's a bit, bit of a difference. And I've also got more range of movement that way before it starts to feel tight. I sewed this seam, this uh, sleeve seam at 3 eighths of an inch rather than 5 eighths of an inch, which is what I had on that sleeve and, and all the other seams. So I'm going to widen the sleeve piece ever so slightly. And I'm also going to address this. Now this is happening because I didn't alter the sleeve head when I when I attached the second sleeve. So this is the, the look I'm going for. This is nice, it's just not what I'm going for. Um, so I want this sort of effect. When you change the, the shape of the arm side, uh, you're changing the length of the seam line. So you need to get the, the sleeve head to match, which because I didn't adjust the sleeve pattern, hasn't happened and that may help as well with the range of motion um so i'll get that sorted in, onto the paper patterns ready to be cut out in the final fabric and if i'm still not getting the range of motion i like or if the the seam popping up is annoying me too much i'll insert a gusset which is pretty easy to do you just cut a diamond or a sort of almond shape the right size and stitch it into the armpit um which has the added bonus of that's quite a hard wearing part of a dress so if the fabric starts to go a bit manky uh, it's easy to replace so next time you see me working on this dress it will be using this fabric now my initial thought was to do the bulk of the dress in this fabric and then the facings and the cuffs in this fabric as a contrast um, it's all rose hut and hubble fabric however I'm wondering if I should maybe do the bodice and the sleeves in this and the facings and the cuffs in this and the skirt in this. It partly depends on whether I can get the bodice pieces out of this uh, navy blue fabric. I've only got a metre of that. Um, so I may not have quite enough to do that, but we'll see. So the other thing I need to think about is hem length. It's a two inch hem allowance at the moment. I'm... 
unhemmed about four inches up from my ankle. So five inches up from my ankle is going to be mid-calf. It's probably a good length, uh, but I'll make a decision before I cut it out because where I am limited to fabric, if I can save a bit of fabric by shortening the skirt pieces and still get the length that I want, then that'll be a good thing. Okay, so that's uh, Butterick 6018 Alt World. I uh, should be getting the final dress version, all being well, next week. Um, depends on how much sewing time I get in between now and then, to be fair. In the meantime, you may be interested in this video here that's on your screen now. <laughs>